Hello, this is Deetra, and you're watching Deetra Kelsey TV. Today, we're talking about black inventors. And before we get into this, I want you all to take a look at this trailer. Charting an unfamiliar course and determined to fulfill their destiny. I had no idea that I would be an inventor. Four African-American inventors make groundbreaking contributions to the toy and game industry. Yes! What you saw is a trail of the documentary, The Gathering. Black inventors got game. And here with me, the director, producer, James Howard, a prolific inventor. He's a professor, a lecturer, design historian, also industrial designer, inventor of some over 300 products and over 21 patents. Genius, I have a genius in the studio today and I'm so flattered. James, the toy and game industry earns about $33 billion yes. a year. Yeah. Okay, first of all, before we get into that, I just had to say that to you all. But why did you do this documentary? I did this documentary, Dietrich. First of all, thanks for those kind words. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, I believe it was necessary mm -hmm. to do this documentary. As you mentioned, the mm -hmm. toy and game industry produces $33 billion industry, mm -hmm. yet uh, the awareness of blacks and their contribution to that industry and that total is relatively unknown. Mm. Uh, and mainly because of the sparse representation, less than 1% within the creative space mm -hmm. of product development and things of that nature. So it was necessary so that we could have these opportunities to have discussions right now mm -hmm. on blacks, creative blacks within an industry such as the toy and game industry and other, you know, leading technological industries. Okay, this is your first documentary. I'm, yeah. I'm, first of all, I'm impressed with that. Thank you. This is your first documentary. How did you uh, go about doing it? You just picked up a camera, as they say, or the, your, your cell phone? What, how did you do, go about doing that? Well, you know, the journey started with a question. Mm -hmm. Right, and I was doing a television show similar to this one mm -hmm. right at the beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. Right, and my good friend Dr. Dell Caldwell had asked me at the end of the show, after querying me on my career as an mm -hmm. inventor and everything, he says, James, you know, have you ever thought about starting an Inventors Hall of Fame? Ooh. Right? right, and so on the strength of that question, I pondered that, and two months later, I had my Black Inventors Hall of Fame wow. certification mm -hmm. uh, as a nonprofit. So you did the Black Inventors Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. you established that, mm -hmm. and then you did the documentary. D yes, then I started reaching out to some present day black inventors. Could you name a couple? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll name the most important one in that beginning of that journey and that was Dr. Lonnie Johnson, the mm -hmm. inventor of the super soaker. I remember that. Indeed, indeed. You all remember that, the super soaker? <laughs> People were getting soaked up. <laughs> Three billion in total sales between that and the Nerf gun, which he had also mm -hmm. in invented. And so once uh, an acquaintance brought Lonnie Johnson into my orbit, mm -hmm. I went to do an article on him. Mm -hmm. And in doing that article, this same acquaintance brought Ken Johnson into my orbit. Mm -hmm. And Ken Johnson happens to be the inventor of Phase 10, mm -hmm. the second most popular selling card game in the entire world. F the second, second. Yes, second. Yeah, second only to Uno, right? Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. I got both the Johnsons, second, right? Oh, hold on, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, Uno was my favorite game oh, as yeah. a child. Mm -hmm. So this, What's the name of Phase, phase game? 10? Phase, phase 10. Phase 10. Yes. The it's celebrating one. His, yep. Celebrating his 40th year right now in this moment. Wow. Okay. And so okay. now I got the Johnsons. I got the bookends of the Johnsons. And mm -hmm. it turns out Ken happened to have known another brother who had designed a very exciting board game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. called the Entrepreneur Board Game. And oh. that was Elliot Eddy. Mm -hmm. And what's significant about that game is that it is the only STEM authenticated board game in the entire world. STEM? STEM really? authenticated, yes. So now oh. we have three unique tracks here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, let me do an article. So I did the article on my website, mm -hmm. and then suddenly someone brought it to my attention that I should probably look into 
this black inventor who has since passed by the name of Charlie Harrison. Mm. And then I'm saying to myself, I know that name, I know that name. Charlie Harrison, okay. Yes, yes. And then suddenly I made a connection that he was actually my college mentor when I was in grad school. Right? Okay. So mm -hmm. I just had that slip of a, of a relapse moment, uh -huh. and I made the connection, and suddenly I realized I have four genius contributors to mm -hmm. the toy and game industry. Mm -hmm. This needs to be more than just an article. Mm, so right. from that point, I decided that I would uh, put a camera in front of these gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And for Charlie, his son is out in California, so I sent a camera person out to him to interview him. And I placed a camera out in front of the other three gentlemen that are still living. I went down to Atlanta and interviewed Lonnie. Oh, really? Okay. And next thing you know, we have the makings of um, this film. So it, that's why it's called The Gathering. It's called wow. The Gathering because as I'm doing the talking heads, mm -hmm. as I'm doing the actual interviews and the reenactments, right, mm -hmm. which your audience will be able to see if they looked at the film, mm -hmm. The Gathering, as I'm doing the reenactments and I'm doing the talking heads, I suddenly realized that these gentlemen know of one another, but they've never been in one another's presence. Mm. Then I started learning about other tangible designers such as David Vonner and Lamont Morris. David Vonner is the Marvel superhero doll designer, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, the Avenger, mm -hmm. um, uh, not Captain Iron Man, right? Iron Man. Mm -hmm. he, he had some to, to do with the design <laughs> of that particular uh, Marvel superhero figure. And then Lamont Morris uh, designed the Real Meal Oven, right? Oh, really? Okay. You would have grown up on the really? Easy Bake Oven. Well, okay. Lamont Morris designed the second generation Real Meal Oven and has a patent on that. All right. So next thing I know, I have six or seven inventors, and I'm saying, wait a minute, we need to come together. Mm. And that coming together took place literally almost a year ago today. December 14th, 2021, we got together in Washington, D.C. on the nation's capital, right? And we met and we had this conversation. But it was more than just an introduction. It was a conversation on what matters, diversity, equity, and inclusion mm -hmm. within the innovation space. You know, I, I, I do want to add that I did see the documentary at the uh, pre-Kwanzaa International Film Festival produced by Ina Norris. And it's very good. The reenactment is very good. And it's informative, it's entertaining, and you all must go see it. Uh, look at the bottom of the screen, and there is uh, information on how you can see the film. And also uh, be included in the uh, uh, pre, I'm not, in the Kwanzaa International Film Festival. I, I find that so amazing. Uh, why D.C.? Why meet in D.C.? That's where I'm from, actually. You know, it's interesting. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. What I was trying to do, I was trying to find a location that was sort of neutral to everyone from where they had to come from. Mm -hmm. And it turns out Lonnie had to make the longest distance, you know. Mm -hmm. And he came up from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, three of the subjects were actually in the D.C. area, mm -hmm. and I'm only three hours from DC. Mm -hmm. So we all agreed that DC was the ideal location and it was just a great day. We spent the entire day shooting mm -hmm. and it was supposed to have served as the precursor to a three-part series mm -hmm. which is still underway. A three-part uh, docu-series oh, really? with the very first one being uh, in Long Beach, mm -hmm. uh, California mm. and that particular series is going to highlight David Vonner and um, Ken Johnson. Okay. Episode two will highlight Elliot Eddy and Lamont Morris. Okay. And then the last episode is going to highlight Lonnie Johnson and my good friend and mentor, Chuck Harrison. Okay, so these people, um, the second, let's go with the second one in mm -hmm. Long Beach. Who are they again and what did they do? Uh, that... Well, in Long Beach, David Vonner did the Marvel superhero figures All right. and okay. others. He's worked for both Mattel and Hasbro. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the... Um, Ken Johnson is the inventor of Phase 10, 40 right, years, right, by the right, way, 40 years, right. and that's presently being represented okay. by Mattel. I wanted the people to make that connection. By all yeah. means, by all means. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the second episode will take place in Reading, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. right? And again, that's going to highlight Elliot Eddy, the inventor mm -hmm. of the Entrepreneur Board Game, mm -hmm. and Lamont Morris, the inventor of the Real Mill Oven. Mm -hmm. And then the last episode will be uh, Dr. Lonnie Johnson and Chuck Harris. Dr. Johnson, as you know, is the super soaker. But mm. Chuck Harris, interestingly enough, 
designed the second generation Viewmaster, mm -hmm. right? The one that we all grew up on, mm -hmm. right? I he gave that. it that toy like quality, that playful like quality, mm -hmm. that Madison Avenue span that just became one of the most successful toys in the annals of toy history. Mm. Yeah. So, um, what did you learn from making this documentary? I learned, first of all, that we are a large folk. We really are. Uh, we're, we're super talented, mm -hmm. right? We're creative. Mm -hmm. And what I learned is that we share a common bond of empathy. Mm -hmm. We share a common bond of wanting to do good and serve a higher need mm -hmm. in spite of all the obstacles. And mm -hmm. all of us shared obstacles. And this was part of the reason why we got together and did the gathering to, to discuss those obstacles. Also to inspire the young generation oh, without also. without a doubt. That was, that was foremost. So when I, I saw you um, mm -hmm. last Thursday in the Bronx, Bronx Community College, and you were talking to the young people mm -hmm. uh, about inventors, creativity, gaming, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all that. Um, do you see, have anybody approach you about this is what I want to do? Um, how can you help me? Um, or I have this obstacle that I have to jump, per se? Actually, yes, uh, multiple times. And as a result, after we finished the gathering, mm -hmm. we decided that we would take our show on the road. Mm -hmm. And we call it the tour, right? The mm -hmm. big tour. Mm. And so when I talked about those three locations, when I talked about Reading, mm -hmm. we've already done two tour segments in Reading. Mm -hmm. When I talked about Long Beach, we've done a tour segment in Long Beach. So when we talk to these high school kids, and we try to always get the host to bring in high school kids, more than just college kids, but we want to start early. And we know how bright they are. We know how insatiably mm -hmm. curious they are, right? Mm -hmm. So we have these conversations with these kids, and mm -hmm. they are extremely curious. They want to know, how did you manage to do what you did? And some of them find it even hard to grasp and come to grasp with, you know, the level of success. Lonnie Johnson talks about in The Gathering. You saw when Lonnie mm -hmm. talked about he goes out to a school, mm -hmm. right, of a friend of his. Mm -hmm. And this great school kid looks at him and says, you didn't design that super soaker. You didn't design that super soaker. Some white guy in the back designed so that super this, soaker, this is right? So somebody from our community. Yes, right? there's a young, young man from our community, a young uh, African-American boy. But you've got to understand, when your story is sequestered like that, right, this mm -hmm. is the end result. When we don't know, this is the type of response that you can expect. So mm -hmm. I want the big film to be an example of just how creative we are as a community mm -hmm. across the board, mm -hmm. right? Across the board from aerospace engineering all the mm -hmm. way down to medical science and mm -hmm. toy and games in between. We are larger than just sports and music. Absolutely. Amen. Please, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Yes. You know, we're more than that. Indeed. Um, I want to ask you, um, what did you learn from the documentary? You did, mm -hmm. you did answer so that. Um, have you been on the East Coast, the West Coast yet? You, it seems yeah. like you're on the, West, the East Coast right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, when we went out to Long Beach, uh, we were asked to do our film mm -hmm. and have a panel discussion mm -hmm. on issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion, mm -hmm. right? So I spent two days shooting that. Mm -hmm. And that was a great experience. They brought in cottage kids. They brought in grammar school kids and mm -hmm. kids from Compton and, and oh, everything. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And, and, and uh, this particular convention was that of Astra. Now, Astra is the American Specialty Toy and Retail Association. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so by having us come in, they showed the film mm -hmm. to a large audience. And then we had the panel discussion. And again, the panel discussion centered around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it included, by the way, another toy and game designer by the name of Mason Williams. And right now, Mason, and, uh, Mason heads up diversity, equity, and inclusion for Mattel, one of the nation's largest toy manufacturers. You know, we're going to really get into the inclusion game of mm -hmm. that. But we're going to take another break, mm -hmm. and we'll be right back. Thank you. Charting an unfamiliar course and determined to fulfill their destiny, Four African-American inventors make groundbreaking contributions to the toy and game industry. 
really was a, an unwritten policy against hiring African Americans at the time. Most African Americans that I run across who, who love or play Phase 10 are totally surprised to hear that an African American or black person is behind it. As a teenager, as an adult, I had no idea that I would be an inventor. Solved the problem, got it working, got it on the spacecraft, and I kind of felt, well, I'm a rat. <laughs> We're back! With me today is James Howard, the producer and directing, director of the documentary, The Gathering, Black Inventors Got Game. Now, we're, I want to talk about the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. the Black Inventors Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Please elaborate on that and why did you start that? By all means, by all means. Well, you know, I'm an academician, a mm. lifelong academician, mm. 28 years in the classroom. Wow. And I started a course called Design History. Mm. And in that course, I started looking into the amazing accomplishments of designers and inventors, mm -hmm. black and white. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've shown a particular interest in the accomplishment of black inventors. Mm -hmm because so much of it had been sequestered for so many years. You know, I learned of, like, a Benjamin Montgomery, who was an African-American slave who designed an improved propeller for a steamboat, mm -hmm. but yet he could not get a patent, right? And even his um, He was slave, a slave, yeah, and he, he could, not, slave, get a could not get a patent. Because blacks were not allowed to own patents. Uh, slaves were not allowed to own patents during that time. Mm -hmm. And even his slave master, Jefferson Davidson, tried to get the patent on his behalf. And oh, even really? he could not get the patent, right? So our patent history had been sequestered for so many years, yet we were innovative. We've been mm -hmm. innovating for the past 400 years, mm -hmm. beginning with Onesimus. Onesimus is an African-American slave that came to these shores back in 1702. Mm -hmm. And he ended up providing an inoculation process to the town of Boston that saved that town from the ravages of smallpox. So in many respects, Onesimus is the father of vaccines because Edward Jenner, who got the patent 70 years later, he mm -hmm. pretty much followed the same script that Onesimus had played out for the town doctor mm -hmm. and his master, Cotton Mather. Mm -hmm. And both the town doctor and uh, Cotton Mather would travel to England mm -hmm. and write papers on this amazing inoculation process that mm -hmm. they had learned from Onesimus. Mm -hmm. So for 400 years, we covered that entire arc of mm -hmm. innovation, right? Mm -hmm. So if we have Onesimus in 1721, mm -hmm. right, which mm -hmm. is when he had first introduced the inoculation process to Boston, you advance 400 years, right, to 2021, and now we have Dr. Nicole Hadalia Green, who is introducing nanotechnology to cancer, right, and providing, right, really a breakthrough answer to eradicating cancer. And this is a sister, right? Oh, really? So, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's what I'm saying. Our, our story is so large that it has to be told. Let me ask and that's, you. That was my impetus for oh. starting the Black Inventors Hall of Fame. Let me ask you this. The, mm -hmm. um, I think it was the Gen Cotton machine. Mm -hmm. Was mm -hmm. that invented by a black woman? No, we, okay. grew, we grew up thinking that Eli yeah, Whitney, uh, <laughs> no, no. first of all, Eli Whitney wasn't even black. He was, yeah. he was, a, he was an actual slave owner. Uh, but. but he did not invent the, uh, a black did not invent the cotton machine. But it, it is only fair to assume, right, that even all of the industrialists back then benefited from our knowledge, right? If we had to be out there in the field and work, we were going to design and improve the tools that we had to work with, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone from Sam to Ned, all of these slaves had taken their ingenious and, and, and imported it into the items that they had to work with, right? So mm -hmm. from cotton scrapers to cotton mm -hmm. gins, we, in fact, um, had imparted knowledge and genius, believe it or not, that helped to continue <laughs> you know, the, the dreads of slavery. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, the, um, going back to mm -hmm. the documentary, mm -hmm. just for a second. Sure. You picked Washington, D.C. In yes. my mind, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you consider inventors architects? Because although, I don't know if it's corrected or not, mm -hmm. although it said that LaFont mm -hmm. invented, a court, uh, art was the architect behind mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. but 
It was Benjamin Banneker. Benjamin Banneker, precisely. Benjamin Banneker was a bad dude. Yes, right? he was, yes. In addition to the clock, right? Mm -hmm. First mechanical clock. He also was a surveyor, and he was a genius in terms of envisioning land space, right? So when Andrew Ellicott, right, the town, the most important town planner of the day back then, mm -hmm. had an opportunity to work with Banneker, right? Had an opportunity to really get to see this man at work. He came away under this impression that blacks are in fact not inferior at all. He was yeah. so impressed with Banneker's ingenuity from an engineering point of view, mm -hmm. from an architectural point of view and everything. Mm -hmm. And do you realize that that viewpoint was shared by our forefathers? Mm -hmm. From Jefferson to Washington, they all felt that. Ellicott countered that and went on record as saying he sees no reason why this particular race is inferior, um, okay. based, just based on his working with Banneker. Oh, really? Yes. I found yes. that just so interesting. So how many black inventors so far, I know you are still gathering people, um, um, how many black inventors are so far in, into the Hall of Fame? Well, because I've only been in business for two years, mm -hmm. I've only had an opportunity to induct three. Okay. Uh, six, I'm sorry, six, right? Mm -hmm. My second induction ceremony will take place next year in March. Oh, so down you in have Atlanta. ceremonials. Oh, yeah, for every that. year. Yep. Every year we induct three African American inventors from the past mm -hmm. and three from the present. Okay? What? Let's talk about the. The sisters, mm -hmm. the boss. Can you, you know, mm -hmm. shine some light on Girl, them? Girl, please. <laughs> I had so, first of all, I had so many people coming up to me and say, why are you featuring all these black towing game designers that are male? Mm -hmm. Aren't there some sisters in, in the game? Mm -hmm. And sure enough, there were plenty, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to tell you first about Adrian Smith. This sister is really bad. She, mm -hmm. First of all, she owns her own media company, mm -hmm. right? And she is the face of Team Milk, right? And listen to this, she's an inventor. She's invented her own game called Blitz Chimps, mm. right? Which is a card game that teaches kids math skills, right? Mm -hmm. Through mm -hmm. football, right? Uh -huh. And more importantly, Adrian Smith is also the, um, the face of women's tackle football. She has more championship rings than Tom Brady. In fact, they just won one just recently, and uh, she plays for the Boston Renegades. And yeah, I didn't even know women had a tackle football league, but for mm -hmm. years they've had a tackle football league, and she is one of, one of their stars. Adrian Smith, remarkable young lady. Then I want to tell you about Nicole, Nicole Murphy. Nicole Murphy was one of the first African-American women in this country to get, mm -hmm. right, to process a patent for an app. And her app, right, it's called Barter Black, which is also the name of her company. Mm -hmm. And what this app does is it allows you to connect with other black vendors and black supporters and black business people, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that we can keep that within this inner circle of supporting one another, Barter Black. And both Adrian and Nicole mm -hmm. are on the tour team. I have five sisters on the tour team, and they're oh, just really? two of them. Yes. Well, you all got a tour back over <laughs> Oh, yeah. Here. We tour, girl. We're touring across the country. In fact, right now, we are talking to two major uh, sponsors about sponsoring our HBCU tour because we want wow. to go to HBCU schools wow. throughout the country, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sharing our message, sharing the film, and then having panel discussions on, matter, on things that uh, matter in relationship to people of under underrepresented people, right? Mm -hmm. In relationship to them having an equal stake in innovation and technology. Okay. Yes. Okay, we're gonna take a break. Mm -hmm. And we'll be right back talking to James Howard, a prolific uh, inventor and also a filmmaker. The documentary The Gathering. Black inventors got game. Be right back. The title conjures up an image of a Hollywood script about a basketball movie shot in the inner city of a minority neighborhood. But that account couldn't be any further from the truth. The toy and game industry is a $33 billion industry. 
Each year, this industry produces millions of products for people all over the world to enjoy. It employs more than 600,000 workers to fill roles from designing to manufacturing to assembling and packaging. In the creative space, the industry employs more than a thousand designers and creatives, of which black product designers account for less than 1%. Historically, contributions and significance of black inventors and designers of the toy and game industry have remained sequestered and pretty much gone unnoticed as they have performed in the hallowed shadows of such legendary greats as Ronald Bruce Howe Sr. of Kenner Toys fame, Ruth and Elliot Handler of Mattel fame, and Arthur Spud Mellon of Whammo fame. But sequestered no more. Now has come the time to tell their stories and recognize the tremendous groundbreaking contributions that numerous black designers and inventors have made in this ever flourishing industry. You are CEO of your own business. The most successful game I've created is a card game called Phase 10. The Entrepreneur Game, a fun, educational, and interactive game for the whole family. I'm Lonnie Johnson. I'm a nuclear engineer and the inventor of the Super Soaker Water Gun. We're here with Charles Harrison, an industrial designer from Chicago, Illinois. Well, this is our opportunity to teach our children now. Show them that the skills and the talents that they have can be developed into a product and they can be an entrepreneur. Black Inventors Got Game is about four African-American inventors and their groundbreaking contributions to the toy and game industry. Most African-Americans that I've run across who, who love or play Phase 10 are totally surprised to hear that an African-American or Black person is behind it. When I was coming up, I've had people tell me that I wasn't going to be anything. There really was a, an unwritten policy against hiring African Americans at the time. I'm hoping that a lot of the owners of these companies realize that they wouldn't be where they are today if it wasn't for the African American community. My fellow engineers at the time, who were some of the top engineers in the country, obviously, were telling me, oh, that won't work, Johnson. <laughs> Solved the problem, got it working, got it on the spacecraft, and I kind of felt, well, I'm a rat. <laughs> when I was growing up as a teenager, as an adult, I had no idea that I would be an inventor. <laughs> had no idea that it, whatever I would invent would be uh, successful as well. When I started with Phase 10, I didn't have the money, certainly didn't have the education. I knew nothing about bringing a game to market. When I walked into Kmart's headquarters, which was the largest retailer in the country at the time, I didn't know that this was extraordinary. One of the things that I think about is the impact that he's had on other designers and really other young people of color. Uh, he firmly believed that part of his work was to help us to have a better shot at being successful at what we're doing, whatever it was that we were pursuing in life. My life was surrounded, I guess, by many of his creations, be they designs or, or, or something that he had fashioned on his own at home. The general public doesn't know this, but uh, even though Lonnie has one of the most successful toys in the world, he was never listed as a successful toy inventor in the annals of toy inventions until recently. There was, you know, a significant amount of, of racism that he um, encountered. Me and two other students from my school, we were the only black students there in the entire competition. And you can imagine this was at the University of Alabama in the 60s, uh, just a few years after Governor Wallace had stood in the door saying no black students would come to this school. You know, there's just so much potential and I think that we should be connect more connected. So I'm hoping that this game will connect the world. Such, uh, such a, uh, you know, we'll say iconic toy of, of its era. It's a signature thing. So <laughs> no matter what, where you come from or, or what you have, you can take what you have in your hand and create something special. Welcome back. What you saw was another trailer of a gathering. Black Inventors Got Game. And again, here with me is the producer and the director, James Howard. You got game. 
<laughs> this is you got game and developing and creating this documentary, which is so needed in our community. I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this whole conversation, which leads me to your company. Mm. You were the executive director of uh, CEO and founder of Howard Design? Yes, Howard Design. Mm -hmm. um, I ran for 15 years, mm, okay. uh, from 1987 to 2002. Mm -hmm. And during that time, at one given time, uh, it was the leading mm -hmm. dollar grossing uh, industrial design firm owned by a minority in the entire country. Okay. Uh, I had such clients as Coca-Cola, Colgate, mm -hmm the CIA, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm not referring to the Culinary Institute of America. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. And uh, Nabisco, uh, Fisher-Price, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson. It was just a, a great experience for me. And it was during that time that I had access to designing so many products, close to 400. In so fact. yeah, oh, that's my next question. Mm -hmm. What exactly did your company do well, for what these we did, clients? We designed products for a company. So companies will come to you mm -hmm. with a need for an improved telephone, or a mm -hmm. need for an improvement in a blow dryer, or a need for an improvement, improvement in a fax machine, or what have you. And we would design those improvements. Mm -hmm. So industrial designers' responsibility is to connect with the needs of the consumer oh, okay. to make sure that a product is not too heavy, to make sure that it's comfortable and safe, attractive, mm. and at the same time affordable. And these are the things that the industrial designer controls. And he works in conjunction with the engineer, so he doesn't right. design right. in a vacuum. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's very interesting how inventors are collaborating or pretty much inventing uh, everyday things that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. So that's something new uh, for me to, to think about. So here's a question I'm going to ask you. Uh, how dare I? What did you do for the CIA? All right. Well, I did for the CIA. <laughs> I did for six years. But uh, unfortunately, I can't reveal too much. Right. Other than to say that our mission was very serious, mm -hmm. and we were designing products that were responsible for helping to save lives. Oh, out really? there in the field. You know, the CIA's role is to protect our borders, right, mm. on the outside. Mm -hmm. So we were designing products just to make sure that that, uh, that took place. Now, that sounds so exciting. I'm a sci-fi, <laughs> science <laughs> freak <laughs> and all <laughs> that. And I like Mission Impossible. Uh, yeah. I like all that stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. you know, I, I, I know you can't say it, but, I, you know, I would love to know if you are making these faces. <laughs> <laughs> you know, face implants and all that and everything. But, um, yeah, so you have six people in the Black Inventors Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you all are trying to get more. Do you do this every year, the yeah. ceremony? Yeah, we plan to do the ceremony every year and dovetail that ceremony directly into my museum which I'm presently plan designing and planning, right? Okay. So once the museum exists, we'll be able to hold those induction ceremonies directly at the museum because the museum is going to have a theater. So it's a virtual oh, museum. No, it's a right now it's virtual, but we're oh, planning okay. a brick and mortar museum. Brick and mortar. And where is that going to be in The city New of Newark, New Jersey on mm -hmm. Broad Street. Mm -hmm. yeah, if I have my way, it'll be on Broad Street. We have a site already selected. Mm -hmm. And the hardest part right now is getting the funds to, to, mm -hmm. to get it built. Uh, but it's, it's, it's in plans. Mm -hmm. um, working with two amazing architects on this mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. And um, we are scheduled to uh, be completed by 2025, spring mm -hmm. of 2025. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You know what I find so interesting about you, black inventors, period, but mm -hmm. you, since you're sitting here, is that um, you're a businessman. Yeah. And you're not just a creative person, oh, yeah. business. And um, I think that's where a lot of us, that's where this hurdle comes. Mm -hmm. A lot of us um, inventors, creative, creative people, uh, are taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. So when you go around the country talking about the Black Inventors Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. the documentary, mm -hmm. what do you talk about regarding uh, trying not to be taken advantage of. By all you. means, by all means. Well, as the kids at uh, Bronx Community College asked just the other day when mm -hmm. I first met you, 
Uh, they had asked, does that still happen now? Do people steal your ideas? Are they out to take advantage of you, mm -hmm. right? And my response was, we never want to be naive, but yet we always want to be optimistic, right? Mm -hmm. We want to assume and trust that people have our best interest at mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, our history and our record shows that even to this day, mm -hmm. it is not a level playing field in terms mm -hmm. of the perception and the resources and the availabilities mm -hmm. of innovative resources for the African American. Mm -hmm. Give you an example. When today's college kids graduate, blacks and Hispanics are equally adept at applying for patents as whites. So if you got a hundred whites, 100 blacks, and 100 Hispanics graduating the day, mm -hmm. there's an equal proportion of those who are applying for patents, mm -hmm. right? But at the end of that arc, we fall far behind in terms of those who actually receive patents. Why right? is that? Well, first of all, we just don't have the infrastructure, the legacy infrastructure, right, mm -hmm. of, uh, of an investment portfolio. We don't have the resources available within our school systems, mm -hmm. within our immediate outreach. Mm -hmm. There are so many reasons why right now this playing field still is not level. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's also due to the fact that there is still a certain element out there that just does not embrace the notion of an equal capacity and an equal ability okay. to produce and sustain. And this is why the Black Inventors Hall of Fame Museum is so important, right? Mm -hmm. It will be the first museum in the entire country dedicated exclusively, right? Exclusively. Exclusively, right, to immortalizing the pioneering genius of African-American inventors for the past 400 years. Absolutely. That's a story that hasn't been told, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So once you tell the story, once the public becomes informed right? Mm -hmm. Then that narrative, then the winds of change can mm -hmm. start setting into place. And you're going to start seeing, I believe, I'm optimistic, I'm perpetually optimistic, in fact, that uh, one day you will see equal opportunity avail mm -hmm. for people of color, right? Mm -hmm. As they are right now for their counterparts. And at the moment that that hasn't happened yet, Mm -hmm. But I see the winds see of change. It. I definitely see I think see with it. people like you all. Okay, we'll mm -hmm. be right back. We will continue our conversation with James Howard, the prolific inventor of his documentary, The Gathering, Black Inventors Got Game, and also Black Inventors Hall of Fame. We'll be right back after this commercial break. To get into college so young, you must be really smart. I am. Yeah. What about you? What college are you going to? Never get much about. Well, what do you want to be? I mean, I like to build, okay. architect, you know, maybe engineer. Okay. Okay. What you want to do? Ready? I'm tall, really. A lawyer, doctor, okay. computer scientist, okay. and hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. You are really smart. <laughs> I like that. You should apply to Hampton. Really? It's a really good school. Ah. There's time to improve your grades right here. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, nothing is impossible for you. What is a mustard seed? <laughs> <laughs> you can move a mountain from here over there. Real faith is all you Thank you. 
Kelsey, host of Sister Talk TV show, and also the producer, director, and writer of the hip hop gospel musical, Whose Side Are You On? What you just saw was an excerpt of the hip hop musical, Whose Side Are You On? It's about Lamont Spencer. He's at a crossroads. Should he return to the church or stay with the gang who avenged his father's murder? It's a great play. It's family oriented, and I want you to come to see it. Go to our website at www.usaiareyouonmusical and leave us your email address, and we'll contact you to let you know of the upcoming dates of the show. I want to leave you with this message: the road you take will seal your fate. Be careful of the choice you make. Whose side are you on? Welcome back. What you just saw was an excerpt from our hip hop gospel musical, Whose Side Are You On? We are still taking donations. You can click the link on the bottom of the screen and donate what you can. We are shooting for the summer of 2023. What we're offering is auditioning people from the community, uh, interviewing people from the community to be crew hand on crew and all that. So contact us at www.kelseyproductions.com. In the meantime, we will continue our discussion with James Howard, the prolific inventor of the documentary, The Gathering, Black Inventors Got Game, and also talk about the Black Hall of Fame, Black Inventors Hall of Fame. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Here's what I want to ask you. I want you to really get into the hurdles. Mm -hmm. The hurdles can be very discouraging for mm -hmm. any, any of us, particularly black people, mm -hmm. that are trying to uh, chase after their dreams, mm -hmm. run after their dreams. Mm -hmm. What hurdles did you have to overcome? Well, to begin with, as a senior mm -hmm. at the University of Illinois, I was told by my senior instructor that he had counseled an outside professional on my body of work and mm -hmm. through that counseling that outside professional felt that perhaps I should change careers mm. okay? that perhaps there was not a career out there for me in the field of industrial design so I took my portfolio off the desk and I proceeded in the year 1980 to knock on 14 doors to look for a job right I knocked 14 times and got 14 no's so mm -hmm. I decided say to myself, well, maybe you're not hireable material after all. So I started doubting myself a little bit. But then I decided that what I want to do is give this one more shot. Mm -hmm. So I got into school. I went to grad school, called the University of Illinois Chicago campus two weeks before grad school was supposed to start. And they let me in. And I started my grad journey. The same portfolio that was all taggered and all raggedy by the time I did 14 interviews. And they assigned me to a particular advisor who for 15 weeks literally kept a tight, pensive look and a stern look on his face and hardly said a word to me for 15 weeks as an advisor. Mm. And yet in week 15, I hear these words come from him. He asked me, why are you in this program? And I looked and said, well, I'm in this program because I want to make something of myself. He says, well, you have no business being in this program. And if it was left up to me, I would never have let you into this program. What? Now listen to this. Up until that moment, I'm okay with everything he is saying because the chairperson of the program sort of, you know, he did me a little favor getting me in on such mm -hmm. short notice. So I'm okay with everything he is saying up to that point. But then he doubled down and said this, compared to the other graduate students, you rank a zero. Yes. You rank a zero. And it was all best off after that. There was absolutely nothing 
nothing. In that moment, I said to myself, nothing is going to shift my trajectory to become a successful industrial designer. Mm -hmm. So they assigned me to another advisor. That advisor looked at my thesis project and said, hey, you got something here. He had, he had suggested that I submit my thesis project for an international design competition. Mm. It won. Okay, mm -hmm. it won, and it helped to put that program on this, on the map, and that's how I ended up in New Jersey. I was down in Houston, Texas, receiving the award for mm -hmm. my thesis project and making a presentation, and there was a company there uh, looking to hire design engineers. So uh -huh. the moral of that story, and this is why I went on the lecture circuit, and this is why even as a professor for 28 years, I always admonish my students, white, black, or indifferent, don't let anyone, anyone change your trajectory. You set it, you believe it, right? And you will achieve it. You, first of all, you dream it. And mm -hmm. I had big dreams. You dream mm -hmm. it, you believe it, and mm -hmm. you achieve it. Mm -hmm. And this little kid from the south side of Chicago dreamed that someday he would be doing something important. And I went from, again, I went from the thesis project, went in an international design award, to designing products for the physically impaired for seven years, and this is where I got a lot of my patents during that time as well, to running one of the top industrial design firms owned by a minority in this country during mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, 80s mm -hmm. and 90s, teaching for 28 years, and now, and by the way, we haven't even discussed the fact that I've owned a school to a private career school called Entrepreneurial <laughs> U, and we'll save yeah, that for another yeah, discussion. Yeah, but, but, yeah. but yeah, I, I No, I think that's really great. You own a school. I own a school. Entrepreneurial U uh, is a school that is set up to teach this pedagogy called design thinking, right? Mm -hmm. That's thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. And there is a certain sector of adults out there that sort of gets in their own way, and mm -hmm. they really need some confidence building mm -hmm. to get over that hurdle of changing careers and finding new career pathways. So I developed mm -hmm. this program called Bridge. I had a contract with the state as a private career school mm -hmm. to teach adults, right, new career skills and new career pathways, mm -hmm. right? And I applied design thinking, which is just the notion of having the confidence to think differently, to mm -hmm. think big, and yet moving forward with that confidence to attain your goals. Who was your biggest influencer? My biggest influencer was my mom and my sister Doris. Oh, I would really? be remiss okay. if I didn't say my sister Doris. She, God bless her soul, I could not do any wrong. I mean, literally, I can draw a stick figure and she would refer to it as the Mona Lisa. <laughs> you know, and that to <laughs> that, me was, that was really great. very, very encouraging. I, I asked you that. Um, I'm going to ask you this, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it will be personal. Did you have a father figure in your home? Oh, yeah, I had a no, father figure. Okay. Although my, my mom and dad had separated when I was younger but he was always a figure in my life. And yeah. that's where I get my engineering savvy. My father was one of the first people on the entire block to own his own business. He owned a mm -hmm. television repair a business mm -hmm. and a radio repair business, and he mm -hmm. operated the camera at the local theater oh, in so, Arkansas. So this is where and you get where the, my mom. the artistic creativity. Precisely, from dad, yep, from dad. What, do you, um, what have you learned so far by doing all of this. I know you learned so much from the documentary, yeah. but people are coming up to you. Yeah. Uh, even here, I'm fascinated with your life, period. I'm, I'm ready for the documentary or, you. In the, or the book for your life. I Thank think you. it's very inspiring. Thank but you. what have you, have you learned from people like me <laughs> that's fascinated by that? What I have learned is truly that if you set your mind to something and you put it out there, right? Mm -hmm. There's a book um, done by Pablo Coleo called The Alchemist. Mm -hmm. And he has a passage in there that says, speak your desires out there. Put it out there. Just and, put it out there. Mm -hmm, and the entire universe will conspire to help you achieve those goals. And this is what I've learned. I've learned that that is true. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that um, as human beings, white, black, or indifferent, as human beings, we have the ability to scale mountains and we have the ability to do good. Mm -hmm. And so my lesson that I want to share with your audience is, in all that you do, do it in excellence. And do it in such a way that it is not serving you, but serving 
others. Mm. This is what I've learned, you know. One more question before mm -hmm. I close up. Growing up during our time, it wasn't mm -hmm. cool to be a nerd. Yeah. Now, you know, they're making movies about uh, it. Yeah. Scientists, is, yeah. you know, nerds are cool. It's okay yeah. to be an introvert. Yeah. I don't know if you are. I don't think you no, are. Think so. But, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's okay because you're, you're doing something productive. Yeah. How did you, that's an obstacle. How did you jump over that hurdle? Well, I'm going to refer to an example that was provided in the film by, mm -hmm. by uh, Elliot Eddy. Mm -hmm. where Elliot had decided to design his own comic book strip mm -hmm. and show it to his friends, and they laughed at him, right? And they ridiculed him, right? Mm -hmm. So the first lesson you learn to overcome those, overcome those hurdles is to have a thick skin mm -hmm. and to, again, just don't let any of that holds you back. But what about those those people that want to beat you up because Girl, you're doing bullies. your thing? And it happens now because it, it, of social media. Yes, it it's definitely happens now. now. Well, well, for me, I learned to uh, be swift of foot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, you just have to stand your ground. You mm -hmm. know. And my moment of standing my ground was the time that Stan, the bully, tried to knock me off my perch Ooh. on the on the uh, the mailbox, the old blue hard mailboxes mm -hmm. that they used to have throughout the city. He tried to knock me off my perch, but he chose the wrong moment, see? <laughs> Up until that time, there had been a lot of buddying and running away from buddies, but in that moment, I was gonna have no more of it. So right. stand your ground, and trust me, the good Lord will let you know when it's time to stand your ground. But for the most part, always persevere, no matter what travails you stumble upon, there's always an opportunity to advance. Does spirituality has uh, a part in oh, where you are doubt. today? Without a doubt, yes, mm -hmm. you, it has to. You know, um, the Christian in me tells me that God is guiding my path, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. right? And as much as I know, Bible admonishes you not to rest on your own knowledge, but in all your ways, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. acknowledge him, and mm -hmm. he will do what? He will direct your path. And this is what I invest in to this day, to this moment. Wow, I really enjoyed this conversation. It's very inspiring, and I hope it's inspiring to the viewers out there. I, I'm quite sure it is. I love doing shows like this. I love having people like you on the show that is giving back. And I've always been, uh, was brought up with this statement. This statement, the more you know, the more you owe. Yes. And that's what you're doing. You've done a lot. The Howard Design, the Hall of Fame, and also I wanted to talk about that school. Yeah. The yeah. school that you're doing. Entrepreneurial you. Yes. Trying, you know, and I think that we need that now because there's so much untapped creativity, no matter what it could it be, a designer, an inventor, uh, a food, uh, a chef, uh, what have you, whatever it is, it is. Um, again, thank you so much, John Howe. Thank yes. you so much. It's been my absolute pleasure. Okay, with that note, we are going to close the show. James, how can someone get in contact with you? Excellent. They can reach me directly mm -hmm. at jhoward. Mm -hmm. at B-I-H-O-F dot org. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Also, we're closing the show, as I said, and I want to thank the crew, Zaki Z Starman. He came down to pretty much direct Dietrich Kelsey TV, and you all know him from Sister Talk TV show. Also, Stan the Man, Stanley Mitchell, the audio person, and my main girl, Summer Star Gray, the stage manager. This is Dietrich Kelsey, and as always, I am wishing you peace, love, and remember to stay in the light.
Okay, with that note, we are going to close the show. James, how can someone get in contact with you? Excellent. They can reach me directly mm -hmm. at jhoward mm -hmm. at b-i-h-o-f dot org. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Also, we're closing the show, as I said, and I want to thank the crew. Zaki Z Starman, he came down to pretty much direct Dietrich Kelsey TV, and you all know him from Sister Talk TV show. Also, Stan the Man, Stanley Mitchell, the audio person, and my main girl, Summer Star Gray, the stage manager. This is Dietrich Kelsey, and as always, I am wishing you peace, love, and remember to stay in the light. So um, you just finished watching Dietrich Kelsey TV. <laughs> and if you want more information, contact me at KelseyProductions.com or James Howard at jhoward at byhoff.com. That is B-I-H-O-F dot org. I apologize, dot org. Yes. Thank you for tuning in. And also I want to thank my crew I want to thank Zaki Z Starman for directing um, Dietrich Kelsey TV because you all know they usually direct uh, Sister Talk TV show. Stan the Man, Stanley Mitchell, the audio, and also the stage manager, Summer Star Gray. And I am Dietrich Kelsey, and as always, I am wishing you peace, love, and remember to stay in the light. <laughs>so I'll definitely um, go with that How do you want me to close it? it. Thank you. Okay. What are you saying? He wants me to close it one more time. Oh, okay. Want me to close it one more time? Two
Okay, you can play a video, this 47 second video. I just wanted to, to get you No, stuck. I understand. No, I'm good. I, I, we're all good. That 47 second video, and we still have speed. Yeah, I can't hear you. These heels are killing me. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Oh, excellent. Just play the video, please. No, I'll talk about it after you play it. 